on the brown, please. Uh -huh. uh, room temp or cold? Um, just room temp. Getting a little, oh, oh. Getting a little excited, oh. are we? <laughs> Shout out to Ben Schwartz. This is um, Sam Morell and Mark Norman's. Oh, I heard about this. Bodega Cat, the smooth, sultry taste of the sweetest whiskey you've ever had. Bodega Cat Whiskey. It's really, really nice. Is that okay? How was that? Wow, muzzle. Do you want some weed? No. Do you do weed? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. You don't do it, mm -hmm. right? That's what happened all the other times. Yeah, yeah. I like getting high when I'm with you. I'm gonna maybe have a little edible. Okay. Free plug, shout out to Kiva. Woo! My favorite. You never get like too mm. paranoid or like freaky? Sometimes I get a little freaky. <laughs> It's so funny. This is the first time it's crossed my mind, but imagining you having being intimate, having sexual intercourse. Yeah, that is funny. Are you like doing bits? Well, to assume that I'm just gonna be fucking doing bits. Well, there's some comics, like I know Steph Tolov, she cracks jokes in the bedroom and based on her personality, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And you're always so silly. And you're always trying to have a good time. Has she won an HCA award for being a dramatic actor? Not that I know of. Right. Not that I know John of. John Michael, push it on my HCA award. Right. Well, there you go. I think we're ready to begin. Woohoo! Uh, would you uh, give him a little snap for the theme music? Scoop doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh yeah. yeah levels. I think I sound good. Yeah. I think you sound good. Yeah, I think you sound really good. You have a really good singing voice too. I think I sound really good right now. I think you sound so very very nice. Hi. That's how I come. So I don't know if you could call that funny, but it you know. It's a performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Performance of a lifetime. Gulp, 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 gulp. Sometimes sex, there's like, you know, it depends on the energy, right? Yeah. And the person. And yeah. Yeah. I was just telling my friend Jake um, that I was, I was, I had, I was uh, sleeping with this guy. We were like, we were dating we a little to? bit. I don't know. Okay. Me and this guy were like hooking up. We we're dating a little bit, and do you have a clip we could cut to? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then later, can I like hump a pillow or something? You could do whatever you want. It's your it's your body. It's your choice. That's how I live my my life. Amen. Or a woman. I think it's important to acknowledge that. Gulp, 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 gulp. I was seeing this guy. We were hooking up, and I remember I was like giving him compliment. You know, I was like being nice. During, you, you do, like, um, I'd be like, oh, you're so hot. Right. Now, did you mean it? Yeah, at the time I meant it. Right. Oh, you don't, well, you, you only said it at the time. Yeah. I don't see him anymore. Right. You're being protective. I understand. Yeah. But I was like, I would like, you know, say nice things and he didn't compliment me give once. Me, give me more examples. Oh, you're so hot. Oh, yeah. That feels awesome. Do they, when you're having sex and you give compliments, do all compliments start with, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I'm realizing as I'm saying, I'm like, oh, I'm having sex right oh. now. Oh. Oh. Right. Right. Um. And he didn't. Oh, you feel so good. Like you didn't think he would. Yeah, and it's also like if you're if you're in an intimate situation like that, mm -hmm. you want it to seem like you haven't been thinking about it the whole time. I would argue that by design, you trying to make it seem like something already is disingenuous, which is the antithesis of what should really be happening. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Allie, you're so funny, but sometimes you cause me stress and make me feel anxious. And that's why I am a CBD user. This episode is sponsored by Next Evo. Get 25% off your first order of $40 or more at nextevo.com code TISO. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O dot com code TISO. I'll tell you more about it later in the episode. So I was giving him compliments, saying nice things, and then he didn't say one nice thing right. about me. And I was like, could you just say, like, give me one compliment? Right. 
something nice and he goes you have he said oh you have the body of a 16th century painting so then I had to go through my head I'm like do I have the body of a dead person no do no, I have you do have the body that is uh, spot on. Do I we'll have side by side? But then I I don't know anything about art, so I was like, are those the like portraits of like bowls of fruit? Is he calling me like a bowl of pears or like a no bowl a woman of- who's who was who was painted mm. in the 16th century? You have you have a look that is timeless. Yeah, it wasn't the kind of thing you want to hear though. Would you have liked if he goes, oh, you're so timeless? Would yeah, that would have been, that been better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, were you giving him? compliments because you wanted to receive them did you give them because- at first i think i was giving him compliments because i'm like this is this is a situation where that m- makes sense and then i think once i noticed he wasn't giving me any compliments back i started really like leaning into it because i'm like surely he'll get i said point. your dick is so hard yeah oh i said oh right do you like dirty talk no, I'm not good at it. So you'd like you like um platitudes. You like nice city, nice talk. Your yeah. sex talk is nice talk. Yeah, I just want I want I want small to... talk almost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the weather's great. Right. Yeah. I have a bit where I talk about how uncomfortable small talk is for me. Um and how that connects to I like dirty talk, but only if I'm in the mood, but sometimes if, if somebody says talk dirty to me and you're not in the mood and it's like, it feels like, what do you want from me? Like, yeah, how was your day? It's just very an uncomfortable thing to fake it. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I was saying about, uh, like if you feel obligated to do something. So maybe when you're giving him compliments, Specifically, if you ask him to give you a compliment, he's now in his head. Yeah. It's not It's not present. Yeah, that makes sense. If I were having sex with you, and I never would, for, for I was going to say so many reasons, I don't want to be disrespectful. Uh, I could think of by the top of my head now, and I'm sure there's more, three huge ones. Okay. Um, I probably would... Um, will you name Will you name all three? I think it would be too mean. Really? Well, for one, while we're talking about sex, you're just wiping snot on your wrist. Oh, because I laughed. Right. Um, I could make that number one, but that's just, you know, under the category of attraction. Okay. Um, also, you don't smoke weed. Okay. That's a that's crucial. No, it's not. I was just trying to give like a, yeah. a joke because I don't want to be mean. Uh, and I was. I was being mean to be mean. Really, the main reason I wouldn't have sex with you is just because I'm busy. But <laughs> I'm just busy right now. You know, I'm on a couple of shows. I got the podcast. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, well, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, please. But that is that is interesting that um, that you like to talk, but you don't like dirty talk. It's not even that I like to talk. It's just that I realized I was giving a lot of compliments and not getting any them? return. I don't know. I was We're, like in the. That's just what felt right, right, right. in the moment. Does that translate outside of sex? Does that translate to when you're doing for somebody, giving to somebody, whether it's emotional or tangible, I should say, or physical? Um, hey, give it back to me. Yeah, a little bit. I do want things in return. Right. Do you make that known? Do you say, by the way, I when I do these things, it is important for me that you reciprocate. I'm learning that through therapy. Right. Saying what you want. Yeah, because in my head, I want things to be like, no matter what it is, like if I'm doing something, well, no, I guess not, no matter what it is. In my relationships, I realize that if I'm doing something nice, I want to either be like, oh my God, that was so nice of you. Thank you so much. Or them to return the favor in some way. Now, you know how you started that sentence was with in my head. You know where your boyfriend isn't? In my head. That's right. Wow. Have you ever thought about being a therapist? Would you ever? I am. Mm. That's why this podcast is doing so well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that you do ask um, really good questions. Thank you. And the way that you, because you can be so literal in a lot of ways, Mm. you really just kind of like skip through all the BS and you just say like- The small talk. Yeah. The small talk. The small talk of it all. Yeah. Yeah. That's why when dirty talking, uh, 
in foreplay, I try to skip the 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 niceties and the small talk, and I just go right into um, how do you want me to eat you out? Um, what would you like? Uh, are you more clitorally stimulated or penetratively? Like a server at a restaurant? Yeah, well, a server at a restaurant. It is like a server at a restaurant because there's there's phases, mm -hmm. right? First, you come over, you introduce yourself. You tell the specials, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to order for you. Here's what I could do. I, I'm pretty good with where the G spot is. I understand how you push down on the pelvic bone. I know, understand when when it fills with blood, it comes down a little bit. It needs to be stimulated. Um, is that what interests you, or are you more clitorally stimulated? Do you like both? Does it distract you? Would you rather finish once? So if I go down on you, you would rather. I don't want to get into this. I'm getting a little more graphic than I mean to be. But like those are the specials. Then you let them order. But some people go to a restaurant, they know what they want, right? You know what? I don't need to look at the menu. Let me get uh, just any type of salad with a, you know, I, I want some vinegar dressing, any protein, chicken or beef, doesn't matter, right? Some people need the menu. Some people need to hear the options. And some people also go, oh, what do you like the most? Absolutely. What's your favorite what thing? What do you like? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, what I like is uh, it's just low pressure situation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but some people might not feel comfortable asking what do you like? Some people might not feel comfortable asking um, to see the menu because everybody else at the table maybe already knows what they want. So I like to I like to let them know, hey, whatever you want is great. But you, I'm not. You know where I'm not. I'm here with you. But you know where I'm not. Tell them where I'm not. In your head. In her head. In her head. Oh, I'm in mine. <laughs> Big. And I'd like to invite you into mine as well. And I think that's important. Gold, 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 gold. Because once you're there. You're no longer spending time. And by the way, we're being silly and we're talking about sex, but this translates way past just sex. Any type of relationship and communication and connection. When I'm thinking about what are you thinking about and or when I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about, I'm not here with you. Yeah, I'm so in my head at all times, especially this past week. What's been going on this past week? I'm just I, I, I second guess myself a lot. And I doubt a lot of like my decisions or like what I should do or say. Mm. And then I make, I don't know if this is a mistake, but I don't like that I do this a lot. I always outsource, like I'll ask my friends what they would do. Right. And I rely too heavily on what other people would do for me to make my own decision. What positively has that offered you? I think it's good to reach out. I think it's good to get other perspectives, but I think ultimately like it's helpful to know who you are and what decisions mm. you want to make regardless. And do you not know who you are? I think or do you I, ignore it. I think it's a little bit of both. I think I don't know who I am. Have you always felt this way? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you give me an example of a situation you find yourself in where you felt if you knew yourself better, you would be at an advantage? Could you repeat that again? Could you think of a situation that you've been in where you felt, if I only knew myself better, I would be at an advantage? Would you like me to ask it differently? Yeah, maybe. Where have you experienced moments where you felt, man, I don't really know myself, where it then got in your way? I think a lot of like business decisions or me um, being in a situation where I have to like kind of uh, be really decisive or stick up for myself. I think I feel bad being like, Having to just be like very straightforward. Those are all different things. Where does sticking up for yourself have to do with making decisions? Do you look at usually you have to decide if you're sticking up for yourself or not? Or like, okay, here's an example. Like when I've been in a relationship. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hey, goblins. My name is Nick Hoff. You may remember me from such classic moments on the podcast as... I'm actually Rick Glassman, oh. and that's my friend Nick Hoff, and he's 55 years old. <laughs> oh, hey guys. My friend Nick Hoff. Good take, you idiot. And Rick was nice enough to offer me the chance to tell you about my brand new comedy special. It's called Nick Hoff Front to Back. It's up now for free on YouTube, and I'd really, really like you to watch it. And while you're there, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you get new videos. Now, back to you, Rick. Um, in past relationships, like if I have to break up with someone, where in the past, like I've always been the one to break up mm. in the relationship, I it takes me like three to five weeks to finally make the decision. Is that a long time? I think so. Oh, oh, darling, it you is. You don't not. think so? No. When you know ultimately that you three don't want to, to five be with this weeks? person? No. I, I I just being in three to five weeks of like being with this person knowing like I, I had have a lawyer to do for this? four years that I knew I wanted to break up with, and that was a lawyer. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way with yeah. anything outside of that as well. Right. I, that to me, from my experience, translated less into knowing myself and more into uncertainty and fear of what the business works and how it works. And I am starting to learn that a little bit better, that what you're supposed to do is what you want to do. Yeah. But I want to find out more about you not knowing yourself because I know myself and I know myself well. But before I knew myself really well, I knew myself because I just, I mean, this, I know this hat. I, I don't get that. I don't know myself thing. I know my, I am me. So like, what does not knowing yourself mean? What would Allie do? I mean, you're Allie. Yeah, I feel like we talked about this last time, like the first time I was here. We talked about it a little bit because with your parents. No, the first time I was here, I was getting really in my head. Yes, we talked about that more actually after the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but getting in your head, I get. Mm -hmm. Not knowing yourself, I want to better understand. How do you, how do you explain what that means? Yeah, not knowing myself. No, I guess, you know what? Now that I'm really thinking about it, it's not necessarily that I don't know myself, it's that I don't trust myself. Mm. You've been in examples where you sabotage yourself? Not that I've sabotaged myself, just that it takes me a really long time to figure out what it is that I actually want to do, even though I already know, but I need other people's approval before I make that decision. Right. I need to know that it's the right decision for my friends before I do it. Do you find that once you get that census that you then do know the right decision? Is there a right decision that often? Not necessarily. I think what it really comes down to is that if it fails or backfires, I don't have to only blame myself. So this comes to all of these difficulties are because you want to have insurance go, 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 go. on the blame game? I think so. Oh, that's such a, it seems like, pardon me for, for maybe negating you here, but it seems like such a simple, who gives a shit? I know. Blame yourself. I know. I need to get over it. Or wh why is there a blame? Could you give me an example? Is there something that happened? It doesn't have to be high stakes. Could you give me an example where like, I know I want to do this, but I want to ask some friends. And then the decision ended up being right or wrong. I don't want to say on pod. Um, because of somebody's name or because of something has to do with yeah, you? Yeah, just because of the circumstance. Okay. Gold, gold. Could you remove the variables, but keep the formula? And we'll bleep anything. Let me just see if I can think of an example that's not so recent. Could I have time to think about it? Yeah, while you're or thinking about it, I have a gift for you. You do? Yeah. I know you and I know what you like. Like it? Yeah, it's mine. Yeah, I haven't cleaned it out. You oh, left it oh here. it's probably like really gross. Yeah, you left it here from 2.0, so let's not open it. I won't open it. it but when you get smells. home, you can open it, and there's a little surprise in there for you. Thank you so much. Which is whatever you left in there yeah, mold. months ago. It's yeah. really disgusting. No. Yeah. Yay, thank you. Yeah. You know how I knew you'd want that? How? Because you made the decision to get it. I don't know if it was the right decision. I don't know if it was the wrong decision, Allie. It wasn't. I don't think I got that for myself. I think that was a gift. You made a decision to use it. Oh, that was my Hanukkah gift for my Aunt Cheryl. Thank you, Aunt Cheryl. The point is, once we make decisions, Allie, mm -hmm. it becomes easier to accept them. Yeah. There is oftentimes not a right and a wrong. I don't know if it was the right idea to have you on here a third time. To be honest with you, I don't know if it was the right idea to have you the second. Gulp, gulp, gulp. But I decided there's something about this girl. She kind of looks like a 16th century bowl of fruit. Thank you. And I'm like, let's have her on. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. Yeah. How's your stand up? Stand up has been good. Um, I'm going to uh, New York. I'm going to be in New York for like two weeks in September. You were just there. How was it? My arms are exhausted. I bet. From flying back. Yeah. And to there. I thought from hailing taxis. No, no. I take Uber Blacks. You do? Yeah. Do you? Wow. You know who else does? 
Ron Funches. I was at the comedy store the other day and he took an Uber. He was driving home and he had an Uber black. I'm like, look at you. He goes, I only do Uber blacks. I go, yeah, good, good for, good for yeah, us. Good for you guys. Yeah. Um, I find an Uber black driver is more of a, what I consider a professional driver. Not to say that Uber drivers aren't, but st- statistically, I don't like not driving. I always want to drive. So Same. if I'm going to have somebody else drive, I want them to be like, this is what I do for a living, yeah. not what I do sometimes. Are you so, yeah, I'm the same way with mm. the driving. Um, I'm very, do you like to have control? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you bring the microphone a little closer? Mm-hmm. That was a control joke, but yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo, yeah. you're good. Did you think of an example? I was trying to, but then I got excited about what the gift, gift might was. be. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I don't want to talk about, I want to just have a silly little right. goof time. All right. Even though your joke's, I can't keep up. Yeah. But I enjoy it. I was like, oh, I'm doing Rick's pod today. I'm just going to be laughing my damn ass off. Yeah. So entertain me. Hmm. I still, even just thinking about it, when I, I forget which episode it was, the Blue Bayou cracks me up. Just thinking about it. You know that restaurant that they have in there? Blue Bayou. Um, yeah, well, for many years, but then I discovered it and I ate there. I think it's called Blue Bayou and I loved it. You did? Yeah. Did that Blue Bayou joke work? Yeah, that was funny. I wasn't sure if it Blue Bayou. <laughs> yeah, it was a good joke and also a great restaurant. And also, incidentally, a couple of days ago, I watched Pirates of the Caribbean part one wow. and last night started part two. Wow. I don't remember the movies that well. Very good. At mm-hmm. least the first two. Mm-hmm. I finished the second one last night, actually. You like those movies? I do. I just, uh, me and my boyfriend tried watching them. I kind of gave up. Oh, would you say they blew by you? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just watched Monsters, Inc. I don't remember it. I remember I liked it. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. It holds up. Disney uh, is something special. Yeah. When's the last time you went? I bring this up every time. I went to Disney World. Uh, uh, oh, with your mom? Yeah, a couple months ago when I was in Florida. Yeah. I mean, I had a great time. Obviously, getting there made my arms a little tired, but I had a very good time. And the Avatar ride is something special. You only went for a day though, right? Yeah. It seems too stressful. If I was going to do Disney World, which I've never been to, mm-hmm. I would need like, I would need a guide. Right. I would need someone to show me. Right. Isn't that interesting that even in your pleasures, you need somebody else to offer you their perspectives? Not their perspective. I just, I, if you have a guide, you get shortcuts. I you get insider info. You've done the guide before. I've done the guide. I've done without the guide. You could buy fast passes. Yeah. Where you don't have to spend $800 an hour on a guide. But I want the guide. The I want to have the best experience possible. Yeah, you know. Oh, I have an example. I have an example. So I have, I I live alone for the first time. I'm in a one bedroom apartment. It's my first time living on my own. And I, all of my furniture in my place is like hand-me-downs. It's like stuff from my mom, stuff from my dad, something from my sister, um, Facebook marketplace, just like nothing. I'm not trying to spend a lot on this place. I don't know how long I live there. Saving up for a Disneyland guide. Yeah. And so... I reached out to someone. I'm thinking of uh, doing a new podcast and I want to do it from my place, Mm kind of like you, but I want it to have a style, you know, and in my setup right now, it's very drab. I just have a blank wall. There's no photos behind the couch. There's nothing. It's Mm -hmm. just very, there's no personality to it. Right. And I guess this does go back to me not knowing who I am. I don't know what my personality would be or not that I don't know. I have an idea, you know, I have my little Pinterest board, but I have a, a, a hard time like committing to a kind of style right. or, um, so I, I reached out to this, to this lady and I'm like, I, I would rather just have her make all the decisions for me. Sure. That's okay. That has nothing to do with your identity. It's but it kind of does. I don't trust myself. I don't, I have no idea of what you my input done it. it. Yeah, I guess. You haven't done it. You put something up on the wall and you go, I like it or I don't like it or I kind of like it. But instead of being like, uh, just I'll leave it until I do something else. Yeah. It's like, um, 
and I'm talking to both of us here, decisions don't need to be that deep. Everything isn't a contract that you're signing. It's just, it's just stepping forward, not in the right direction, but just not being stagnant. Mm. And it's hard. I'll sometimes spend an hour, an hour figuring out what I'm supposed to eat for lunch. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. so much. Most things don't matter, but we are fortunate enough to not consciously always recognize that. And that's, you know, I, I don't really talk about a point of privilege too much on this podcast, at least not unless I'm being ironic of talking about like talking points, uh-huh. but really like the fact that you're stressed about not knowing what to put on the wall, like fucking what a luxury. Yeah. What a luxury that you have a wall, you know? Yeah. But uh, I saw a, a billboard years ago. I was driving with my dad and we say this to each other all the time, joking, but it connected to us both. It was an Ikea billboard and it said, be bold, not beige. We love it. Make a choice. Oh. Incidentally, I have a white wall and an earth tone blanket so people don't put their outdoor clothes on my couch. But like, I have colors. I like choices. I like things. Mm-hmm. Just like make choices are so attractive. Yeah. You know, and not because of the right choice, but they're just specific. You just, you did something. You did something. You did something. Yeah. I like that. You are, you are very helpful. I feel like I learned something about myself every time I do the podcast. Yeah. And I also, I it's my understanding from the feedback I get from my boppers and goblins. Thank you so much. So does the audience. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great. Because I, I still think about it a lot when you told me. Um, Put your shirt back on. I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Ellie, put your shirt back on. Uh, right. When you told me. Fuck, what was it? Um, oh, that I, I frame things in a really negative way about myself. I'll be like, oh, I have such a bad memory. And you're like, why are you saying it like that? You can just say I'm, I'm not good at recalling. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know if I remember you saying that. I don't know. Something something along those lines. It's a memory joke. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I remember talking about uh, the language we use kind mm-hmm. of uh, defines how we see things, including ourselves. Do you do like mantras or anything? Like, do you have any sort of kind of. Uh, I close my eyes and I often say I am phenomenal. Do you? No, but check this out. Uh, we don't need to swipe to a clip. A couple weeks ago. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, although before going on stage sometimes, I was making a joke, mm-hmm. but before going on stage sometimes, when I'm feeling pretty nervous, and which I, I'm not against, I like, I find that when I'm feeling nervous, it's I have the most potential. I do, it's not a mantra, but I do like give myself compliments. Yeah. Like I go, Rick, you've been here. You're... You're so good at this. So I guess that's almost saying I'm phenomenal, even though that's an ironic joke. When do you get nervous? Like, are there, what are the typical circumstances of you getting nervous? It's just, I'm, if there is a common thread, I haven't uh, recognized that pattern. Oh, interesting. Um, I also don't believe there necessarily is one. Hmm. It's just, you know, sometimes, sometimes you want to perform. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you really want to do well, whether it's for somebody in the audience or for yourself because you've been feeling low or yourself because you're feeling good and you want to, whatever it is, I don't know. But, but, but a lot of times I'm feeling nervous. It's just really, it's a nerve wracking thing. I'm, you know, to go up in front of, I mean, oftentimes hundreds of people and like all different and to be like, we're basically saying, watch this, guys. Yeah. And girls. And those are the main two, right? Um, I would say those are the predominant yeah. two. But then there's a lot of others. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you? Do you get nervous? Yeah, but I notice when it arises. It's when, like I was at the improv a few weeks ago and Bobby Lee was there. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he had ever seen me do stand up and he was going on right after me. Right. So I was like, he's gonna at least watch the last minute of my set. You think? He's, maybe. I think he also said he was gonna watch me, so I knew for a fact that he was going to. Let's see if you watched. The odds of him answering this, I give, especially now after two rings, one in ten. 
Hey. Hey, Bobby. Yeah, I'm working. What's up? I just wanted to see if you're working. Yeah, I am right now. All right, good. I well, love you. All right, have a good set. All, all right. right. Tape. Um, see, he loved it. You could tell. Uh. You know, it's funny. It's a funny slip that I said. When when a comedian says they're working, I think of set. Yeah. Not like... Most of my, I guess I could say, at least money that I've made mm-hmm. has been from acting, not stand-up. Mm. But I still think like comedian, not actor. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. I mean, when I started doing stand-up, a lot of the other comedians were like roughly between like 28 or 32. And okay. Well, I was to like, say roughly, but still such a small, just like around thirty, right? Yeah, around thirty, and um, and in my head, they're still that age, even though it's been. My mom often talks about how she years. still thinks she's just a young kid. Yeah, yeah. Like my friend was like, "Oh, it's my birthday." I was like, "Oh, how old are you turning?" And they were like, thirty-nine. I was like, "How old are you?" Twenty. I'll be twenty-seven. In a few weeks. weeks. Right, that's right. September 18th, right? Yeah, but I'm 26 today. Is it the 18th? <laughs> what? Is it really the 18th? September 8th. You just said, yeah, huh? I didn't hear you. Right, because you were just thinking of your next joke. That's what I thought maybe Bobby would be doing the last minute of your set. <gasps> just thinking of his joke. <sighs> he liked it, okay? But I get nervous for that. And because then, you want him to like you. Yeah, I want him right. to think I'm funny. I want him to... um, Like, look at me as maybe a peer... Potentially. I had a set at the improv uh, a week ago that Adam Zekiel, shout out to Adam, he created Undateable, but he's also just so hot and good. He's, I look at Adam as, and also I, he is kind of this, but I look at Adam in this industry of if people like, he's a, he's a writer and he's brilliant. And if people are like struggling with their script, people are like, bring in Zekiel. Like, you know, he's the secret weapon. Wow. Um, and he's in, he was in town doing a job and I, he hadn't seen me perform since probably 2016 when we did Undateable. And he came and I was like, I really want to do what I really want to do well. I want yeah. him to see me do well. That one I get. But how often is there somebody that you care? Pretty you, often. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that Especially, because you have a lot of people that you care? I think so. I care. Yeah. I care a lot. There's nothing wrong with that. P- There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's such a stigma to people caring. I, I remember I, I talked about this. Maybe I'll put up a clip uh, when I did Ron Funch's podcast. People like bust my balls a lot. Like Rick tries so fucking hard. And it's like, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I try so hard. Well, because it's like the people who don't try hard are trying so hard to not seem like they're trying hard. Yeah, I believe that. I don't know if that's always the case, but that makes sense. I think for the most part, it's the case. It's it, why is there, and like, Oh, you got to stop caring. You shouldn't care. I think that there's truth to not letting these things, what we care about and our, what we're scared of, control us. But to pretend that we don't care. I don't, I don't care what people think. Of course I do. Yeah. I'm not necessarily going to do what I think they want me to. See, but that's my problem. That's what I was talking about. I do care too much about what they think. Caring... Yeah, I guess if you say too much, but caring what they think is not a bad trait. Yeah. But believing that what they think is the priority is. So I guess Mm -hmm. another way to frame that might be less about you not wanting to care what other people think so much, but to prioritize what you think more. And yeah, that's connected to you not trusting yourself, maybe. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to until you've done it enough and realize even if you feel like you made the wrong decision, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm trying to work on that right now. It's a priority for me. How do you work on that? I'm um, going to therapy and actively trying to be more decisive with myself instead of other people. <laughs> Allie, once again, funny stuff. Hi. I'm Rick Glassman from the Take Your Shoes Off podcast, and this episode is sponsored by Next Evo. I talk about CBD on the podcast sometimes, and I get people messaging me. Yo, Rick, what up? Do you really use CBD? Hey, Rick, how you doing, dude? What's up with CBD? Rick, huge cock.
Next Evo Naturals is developed with Smart Sorb technology, clinically proven to help your body absorb CBD four times better than regular CBD oil. Sometimes when I'm feeling anxious, I reach for a bottle, I take a pill. They also have mints and gummies, etc. but these are the ones I've been using. They're all natural products are backed by more scientific studies than any other CBD brand developed by experienced consumer healthcare and pharmaceutical professionals. They're vegan, they're GMO-free, they're gluten-free, and these THC-free capsules and gummies are derived from 100% U.S.-grown hemp. Stop wondering if CBD is right for you. Try Next Evo Naturals capsules, gummies, mints, and topical creams. Clinically proven to be better absorbed by your body. Get 25% off your first order of $40 or more at nextevo.com with code TYSO. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O.com code TYSO to save 25% off your first order of more. I suggest giving it a go. Woo! You're good. What's that, Allie? <laughs> Sometimes you could be so high energy. <laughs> Why didn't you make me clean my phone? Um, I've been. I also haven't been making everybody I ask, but I don't make people wash their hands anymore. Whoa! I am working on wow. not um, not being uh, letting the uh, obsessive compulsive disorder kind of control me as much as it does. Yeah. Very tiny steps. Yeah. I i mean i i have a similar thing where i i also like to be the only driver mm -hmm. like i drive my boyfriend everywhere i refuse to let him he told drive me. well at least you told me how much you drive him crazy <laughs> um and even if we're on a road trip like six hours to arizona or something i drive the whole way there you don't and trust back. him i don't know i think i think uh, it's funny because this is like the opposite situation. I don't want to blame him if he, if something gets messed up with my car. Like if he crashes or someone bumps into Why? him. I don't know. I'd rather just be like, this is my problem. I don't know. I get like really, uh, I have like only child syndrome a little bit mm. with stuff like that. I don't like sharing. I don't like him driving. Um, but I try... I'll like try and do an exercise where I'll just let him. I don't try. I, you know what the thing is? I'm always trying to predict what your bit is going to be. And then I almost try and do it, <laughs> but I don't. Anyway, um, so I'll try and let him drive just so I can like work on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't like it. I like the way that I drive. You but know, then I realized like nothing bad is happening when he's driving. He just drives differently than I do. Just he's on the wrong side of the street. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> drives with his feet and his hands on the pedals. <laughs> I like your boyfriend. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. Does he um talk to you during sex? Um, we try and keep it quiet. Smart. Mm -hmm. I don't like you on your like, phone during sex. I picture you on your phone during sex. <laughs> no. Good. Yeah. Never. Never. Not with him. Right. In the past, I think that I've probably just checked really quick. I've done a joke a couple of times um, when I was young uh, after climaxing. Mm -hmm. um, and more specifically, after the lady opposite me climaxes, I uh, and she goes so, and she says something like, you know, she's being nice, of course, but she says like, that felt so good. You're then you were so funny during all the bits that you did during sex. <laughs> no, but when she says like, you know, she enjoyed herself, I go, yeah, and she'll go like, yeah, and I go, I gotta call my dad, <laughs> or I gotta call a buddy or whatever. And uh, I've done that a couple of times where I don't really call. Somebody, I just pick up the phone, I pretend, and I have like a fake conversation. Um, but then once I did it, and then and I called my dad. I think I called my dad. I don't remember. I either called a friend or my dad. I think it was my dad. Just like taking the bit a little bit further. I'm like, Dad, yeah, I just had sex. Oh, that's great. Like just now, she's here and she loved it. And I just wanted to tell you, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm the man. And uh, I know she didn't like it. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. But it's a joke. Yeah, but it's too much. Yeah, but here's the thing. I wasn't wrong nor was she that that relationship was destined to never work mm -hmm. <sighs> dad i gotta tell you something you know and she's just right next to me like that's funny 
It's weird. It's weird to know. Like, obviously, your parents know that you're sexually active, but it's weird for them to know when exactly. Yeah, I'm also not even that sexually active. I'm not having sex now. I just like... How do I know? Because you would be complaining. (laughs) Because your dad's not on the phone? (laughs) Yeah, because I would be calling my dad right now. Um, When... Back to like small talk and just like compliments and Mm -hmm. stuff. When girls say stuff during sex of how much they're enjoying it, I always... And I don't mean this as self-deprecating as it sounds. Do you need to Mm -hmm. do your drugs? Go ahead. Um, that just gets you high. It's like to, it's like it's tobacco, and it gets you high. You could have had a coffee. You'd rather have that poison. Mm-hmm. Okay. You do that every day, all the time. All the time. I love it. Mm. It causes anxiety, though. Why do you do it? Because it's so good. Why don't you smoke weed? It makes me way too high. I I never have. There's been like two times I smoked weed where I was like, I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand what this is supposed to do. Every other time I've smoked, I'm never having fun. I'm constantly paranoid. I'm always thinking I can like feel my heartbeat. I think I'm going to die. I feel like I'm shitting my pants actively or pissing or drooling. And then I'm like touching my face to see if I'm drooling. I don't like it. Yeah. It sounds like it's just not for you. It's not for me. Yeah. I tried. So the uh, the compliments during mm. uh, intimacy, I always feel like I feel the same way. Uh, and we've talked about this when I'm about to say not not in the not analogously, but when somebody comes up to you and like after a show, and it's like great set, you're so funny. I feel like it's okay. Don't do that. But what if you really like your set and you think that they're cracked? Yeah, that's great. I just never know the difference between somebody meaning it and not meaning it. And I don't assume they're lying, but it doesn't it doesn't fill me with anything. Yeah. Well, people say, what's that saying where where it's like compliments and criticism are the same thing? Like they're kind of uh, I don't know what the exact a projection thing of- is, but it's just like. They're both filling this ego, whether it's good or bad. It like it's a fake thing that people are giving you where it's like you should. Yeah. Cause I I when I have it when I feel like I've done a really good set and people compliment me, I'm like, we're on the same page. We're both feeling the same way. Yeah. <laughs> Just for people that know that was put in post, that wasn't real. Because if people are like Rick farts in his microphone and he puts it by his face, it was already in me. Go ahead. Um people if I feel like I really had a good <laughs> if I feel like I had a really <laughs> me, me on Oprah <laughs> I feel like Tom Cruise instead of jumping on the couch you're just farting uh, yeah and if she says something like her producers go he is autism just go just go <laughs> there's reddit there's I just found out there's reddits about people wondering if there's a if I have a mental um disability you have a face that looks like you have some like a chromosome mistake i know yeah. i know i look a little bit sloth like i was gonna say yeah that's good <laughs> but it really works to your advantage what do you mean like if your eyes were closer together like a regular person uh and if you're too so far I, no, 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 i'm 100 joking <laughs> people do say that i was just, i could have said the other way around i don't think so um People have funny insecurities about that stuff, though. I know Giannis Papas feels like his eyes are too close. I look blind. How do you look blind? Because my eyes, when I take my glasses off, they're close together. Oof. And I am blind. I can't see you now. But it does look, I do look like, you know. Mark that. Yeah, Mark that. at my audio. Yeah, can you fix my eyes in post? What's his name again? John Taylor? No, Michael. We could Michael. Look, here, here, let's give Tom an opportunity. Show sh- here. Look to camera. Take yeah. off your glasses. What kind of eyes do you want? I want can you just pull them apart a little bit? Just a little bit of separation. A little bit to the right. While he, Rick's looking at his hair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not insecure about it. I think I have a cool yeah, face. Don't worry about it. You don't have to be a beautiful woman. I think you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm joking, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Some people time some people think I, I I like it's funny, and then some people are like, oh, he's bullying, and I go like, I guess I could stop doing that because I don't want people to feel bullied. No, I think it's funny when you do it. But then also, I don't want just because people think that 
to not do it if the person opposite me is comfortable with it, but I needed to check. Yeah, no. Um, Fix your posture. No. There you go. There's I... another wild phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah, no, it's just, it's interesting, but I do think that there is, I might, they might be correct. What, what are we talking about? People on Reddit. About you having a face that's slow? No, just the, there might be, they might be correct in some ways that I might have some kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I think I have weird, I have weird quirks, mm -hmm. but anyway, I don't want to talk about it on the pod. Um, smart. Yeah. You don't want to get in trouble. With who? Your boyfriend. <laughs> Why would I? What if he doesn't realize how odd you are and then he watches it and goes like, oh, I don't know. Then that'd be that. You know what? Hmm. Ain't that the truth? Think about it. When we're worried about things, well, I guess that would be that. Yeah. It is what it is. Wow. I never thought of and that would be that is that closely related to it is what it is. And that would be that. Who would win in a fight and that would be that or it is what it is? Um, I like that would be that. Because it's not implying that something has already happened. It's just saying right. it you could. Like the wood. And then that that would. I also like it, but for a different reason. That would be that is kind of just an if then, where an is what it is is a little passive aggressive saying, my foot is down. Here's what it is, no matter what. You know, that that would be that. Oh, yeah, I could see how you're talking about it is what it is. Oh, I guess I have no say in this. Mm -hmm. That would be that is more like trying to explain. It is what it is is more like policing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the difference. I should have spit my gum out earlier. Oh, I wasn't mocking you. No, I, mean, I know, but it's been... Can I spit it out? Um. Yeah, yeah I'll get you a, uh, a napkin. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have napkins. I'm going to go to write it. I'll be right back. Bye. What are you doing the rest of the day? Well, despite this episode being out already, um, uh, excuse me, uh, my basketball video being out once this episode airs, uh, I'm uh, editing. I'm going over to uh, John Michaels. John Michael, how you doing, bud? Uh, who edits the podcast with me. And we've been working on this bas you can a basketball video, so I'm going to go over there and we're making some some changes and yada yada. Cool. A lot of a lot of time in front of computers, editing and working and doing and posting and. Do you use the blue light glasses? Uh no, and I've been thinking about getting it, but I don't want to. I want to get them into my lens. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really want to get like transition lenses. Uh, I think that's very brave. I think they're cool. I think that's very brave. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think now is the time to get transition glasses. I think that transition glasses are just like any other glasses. Um, it's just, they were maybe born, um, with just, you know, just either sun or just for near slash farsighted. And, uh, I think farsighted funny, you don't even need a snap. We'll do it. We know what we're doing here. Um, yeah. Like, uh, and, and I also think that it's about time we start accepting, uh, trifocals as well. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of people that feel like, oh, you know, like even, even our United States Navy, uh, excuse me, I don't know, our Air Force. Um, they don't let pilots in with tri trifocals. And readers, you know about the readers? Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. How have you had so many? Oh, um, just because I just, you know, I work my ass off. Are you talking about my awards? Because I have no, a lot more than this. No, I wasn't. Go ahead. But I think that's really cool. Thank you. How, do, how, do you, how have you had so many guests from the show New Girl on the podcast? How does that all tie into your life? I've had three, right? You've had Lamorne. You've had Damon, Max Greenfield. And, yeah, and Damon Wayne's Jr. And then Cece. I haven't had her on the pod. Hannah Simone. Yeah. We're actually doing a show together now, so perhaps she'll come on. Um, So Lamorne's one of my best buds. From what? New Girl. And um, also, uh, <laughs> congratulations, Lamorne. He just... Uh, at this point, a couple weeks ago, guest hosted Jimmy Kimmel Live. I saw. So cool. He's just doing a monologue and interviewing the guests. I just, there's something so romantic to me about late night and to actually host it. That's so cool. Yeah. 
it's such a like he's done big things and to me that's like one of the coolest things um i've just been friends with him for like a, like a decade now um i met him at a party and i had been watching new girl and i saw him and uh mutual friends and he was talking i think to brent and somebody else and i just introduced myself i said i'm a huge fan huge and he goes thank you so much man i appreciate that because that was back before he was so silly when he was like an actor where he was being real cool he's like that's so cool man i appreciate you dude what's your name and i stumbled over i said uh i said which is my hebrew name but bleep that i don't want people to know my hebrew name really bleep it but not because i don't want them to know it but because it's my password to things <laughs> and uh he goes that's amazing man yeah let's get him on the phone edit that whole thing down are you friends with max greenfield yeah i worked with max on uh a futile and stupid gesture mm, i just watched that the other day it's good isn't it yeah it's um i love him he just got on tiktok i know and went viral Did he's you see? so cool <laughs> He just got on. He has one video. He already has 500,000 people uh, subscribing. Um, and then uh, I know Damon Wayne Jr. because of stand up yeah. and also he, like mutual friends with Lamorne. Um, he is. Man, he's so they're all those guys are so funny. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever asked Lamorne if he remembers how we met. I want to hear his telling. You want him to do your podcast? Hello. Hey, what's up, Lamorne? Just kidding. That was me. Um, And then, yeah, Damon Wayans Jr. Uh, actually did my podcast. He was one of my first guests like years ago. And we never posted it. Why? I did a few podcasts early on that I never posted because I just didn't feel like we shined enough. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault. And I mean, it had to be somebody's fault. If we had to blame somebody, I'll blame me. But it was just, we didn't find the pocket. I was still figuring it out. Um, and I recorded some knowing I may not post them. Yeah. Um, I want to see if I have the footage somewhere because I've saved stuff because there was a lot of really good stuff in it. I bet. And if it were now, I would have edited it a certain way. But just as its own piece, I just didn't. Who's your first guest on this? My first guest that came out was John yeah. DeWalt. Oh, nice. The first one I recorded was Dad and Teddy 1.0. My dad and cousin Teddy. Nice. Um, the Vegas dads will show some of the cards. Um, so, but but let's, you know, I don't remember what the hell happened and 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 uh, uh, and how we got into all of whatever we were just talking about with New you Girl You gotta get stuff. Zoe Deschanel on. Yeah, maybe. She said she'd do it. Lamorne talked about Take Your Shoes Off on their podcast and he's like, he's so funny and he pitched a bit that I do and he pitched it so bad. Oh, no. Um, and it made me sound so not funny. But she was like, I'll do it. I'm like, yeah, but Lamorne, you told my joke bad. Um, but we were just talking about something with you, with control and bullshit and blah, blah, and who cares? Yada, yada, what? yada, yada, now yada. Teach think, me. Could you teach me improv? Yes. Could and I'm curious some? what you'd like to know. Um, could we like just try and do some improv? Yeah, you know, it, what, what, what makes a great improviser is what also makes a good actor. Incidentally, what also makes a very great communicator. Mm. Incidentally, what also makes somebody charismatic and charming, which is really not that hard once you know how to do it, but like seemingly impossible if you haven't figured it out. And that's being present. Mm. Instead of thinking about what you're going to say, think about what they're saying. Listen. Respond. And your response doesn't have to be words. Your response could be confusion. Your response could be excitement, fear, uncomfort. Your response isn't dialogue. Your response is natural. How does that make you feel? Mm -hmm. 
Now, another difficult part of that is once you're able to do that, how do you actually have that sense of memory to these emotions, right? How do you have that ability to connect this thing that you know is fake, but treat it as if it's real? And that's where you just have to let go and enjoy what I like to call the game of play. Two, three, four. Hello, I would like to uh, inquire about your discounts for buying one bag of coffee and getting the other half off. Could I just buy one and get 25% off? At this establishment, we've um, we've created. Instead of saying this establishment, name it. Gift oh it, yeah, yeah. Create it. Add details. Paint it, paint it. Add details. Here at. Okay. Okay. And then you could even add here at Ali's Coffee Shop, mm-hmm. where every buy one get here at the Bogo Coffee Shop. You know, like add some stuff. Always add. Always okay. until we have this world that we get to now. The work is done, baby. Now we're just living in the world. Mm-hmm. But we got to get that. That we got to paint this picture first. Okay. So are we starting over? I'm sure. just picking up. We'll, we'll start over. We'll start over. Okay. Um, uh, I'm flattered that you wanted to meet with me. Tom said that, uh, you know, I should go on a blind date because nothing else has worked. I was very nervous and you're beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Tom's Tom's a great friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, we've known each other for so long. So when he said that you were looking for someone, I... I How long have you guys known? Where did you meet? Gift us Tom, because now somebody on the back wall, Tom, could come in and have all of these attributes. Okay. Should now, we start over? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, whew, man, I am thirsty. I have not run in a very long time, but I'm actually in better shape. Have you ever done a marathon before? This is oh. actually my 20th marathon I've See, been. See, I'm going to interrupt you. Explain what kind of marathon. Where are we? Is it in Boston? Have we already finished running the race? Okay, let's okay. let's start over. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so I just needed to get a checkup from my uh, doctor before I go for my shoulder surgery. Um, I mean, the blood work seems okay. Is there anything uh, else that I need to be doing here? Um, if if you want the supersize meal, I'm happy to offer that. Um, but we can, you can stick with your combo that you wanted initially. And yeah, Kaiser's just around the corner. Perfect. So. Perfect. Perfect. When somebody comes in and gifts you that you're the doctor, throw that away and instead be a fast food restaurant. And you painted the picture, Kaiser's next door. I like that. Let's do another one. Okay. Man, being a shark is tough, but at least, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the apex predator in this ocean. Thanks for being my friend, littler shark. <laughs> Baby shark. Do, 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 Brilliant. Do. So I think you're ready. Now... Let it call it call up Schwartz. Ben Schwartz? Yeah, get him in on this riffing. Mm-hmm. I'm really good at it. Okay. No, don't. Don't. Do you not want to? No. You were okay with me calling Bobby Lee and Lamorne, but not Ben Schwartz. Well, Lamorne, we talked to him last time I was on the episode. Mm-hmm. He was your mom. Mm-hmm. And that then was my mom. But it was also Lamorne. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I, I get nervous. Um, why are you so afraid of being nervous? Call him, call Ben. Before we do anything else, why are you so afraid of being nervous? I don't know. What has nerves done to you that has proven it to be a foe? Nothing. Do you think that? nervousness has, has, is misunderstood and has maybe gotten a bad rap. Yeah, I think so. You know what? Call up nervousness. I have an apology to make. That doesn't... And scene. I really think that nervousness has a bad rap. Yeah. I like when I'm nervous. Mm. I like that feeling. Right. The jitters. The jitters. Oh the my jitters. gosh, have you met my jitters? No. Cut to wide. Hi, little yeah. jitters. Yeah, they look like little um little mucinex goblins, don't they? Yeah, little They call them the jitters. The jitter critters? Yeah. They're good dancers too, but it's pretty expensive to because it's tough to do footwork with uh with animation. A lot ah. of people don't know that, Tom. They don't get it. When you have to deal with a lot of movements with the feet, there's a lot of postural changes mm-hmm. as well. And it's 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 just a lot of work. It's not to say it's not worth it. You know, there was a, an episode that we did. I think it was our first one where there was some animation and I made a joke like, eh, it's going to be too expensive. I don't know if, you know, only episodes they get. I don't remember the number. Maybe I said 70,000 or something. Um, but since it's come out, it has hit and exceeded that number. 
And now there are comments every now and then like she, she hit the nut, you know, like, so that's why I felt comfortable adding the jitters. <laughs> What's your favorite part about comedy? Tell me in song. <clears throat> Could you, oh, you don't have the piano. I, yeah, I, I should set that up so I could play with guests. Can you more. play the guitar? Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Another turning point of work struck in the road. Yeah, but you're supposed to sing about okay comedy. Nerd. Yeah, what is my comedy? favorite part about comedy? It really hurts my pinky. Does it? Yeah. Well, then don't do it. No, but I want to have some music. Okay. Shit. <laughs> oh. My favorite part of comedy is when people laugh. They're not laughing at me, they're laughing with me. If I'm doing a good... It hurts too much. That's okay. It really hurts. But. I like when people are laughing with me and knowing that we're all having kind of somewhat of a universal experience. Are you kidding me? It's one of the best. Yeah. I, I saw a meme today of uh, things like that that uh, that uh, cause short term dopamine boosts versus long term dopamine boosts, and laughter was one of the long term. Yeah, I mean when when I mean there's so many jokes where I still blew by you. What do you mean? Like like comedy being long term. Mm -hmm. Coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still can't believe you farted into them. That wasn't real. <laughs> your fake fart. Yeah, well, you farted. Do you always close your eyes when you fart? Only what? if it's like hard to get out, but I know it needs to come out. What are you closing your eyes for? Just for added. Really answer the question. What are you closing your eyes for? I don't want to see other people's reactions. Man, you're so... You're so... um sensitive to other people and the way they th see the world that how could you have space to see it yourself i just want them to be able to experience my fart without my pressure of they're all wrong. watching them everybody's wrong mm. almost all the time they're wrong perfect i ate um six del taco burritos yesterday do you um, are there moments where you try and take care of yourself? Do yeah. You ever look out for yourself? Often. Why do you eat that? I was doing it for money. I was trying to eat 10 Del Taco burritos for $1,000. Who was going to give you $1,000? My friend Maddie Matheson. Why would they give you $1,000? Because I was doing a challenge. I said they because there's so many Maddies involved in that name. Hmm. Yeah, I was trying to see if I could. I was trying to do an, uh, a mukbang, but an alley mukbang. What's a mukbang? Mukbang is when you eat a bunch of stuff on camera. What's an updog? What do you think this episode will do um, in the first seven days? I don't think that will. Well, maybe. I, I think I'm going to say in the my first... My audience really likes you. I say my audience with a... I'm almost full for all the humble pie that I've been eating. But I mean the people that watch this podcast. I think in the first seven days, it'll get... How many do yours normally get? 800,000 in the first week. No. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 20,000 in the first week. Oh, honey. Is that crazy? If this doesn't break 40 in the first week, there's going to be no 4.0. I don't mean that, but I'm confident that this will Guys, break 40. Guys, like, share, comment, right. subscribe. So what's your podcast going to be? And does that matter? I mean, does that matter to like you? Like, is that like a thing that's high up on your list? Yeah, my my podcast that I kind of have just put on Patreon and kept behind a paywall for now, I'm just trying to rework it because it was just me solo talking about my week and stuff. And that was just getting 
I don't know. I just lost excitement for it into this podcast that I'm going to be. That's a good name for a podcast in the way your face is. Lost excitement for it. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's all like curb your enthusiasm. Oh. You know, like put that aside. Curb it. Yeah. Lost excitement. Okay. Well, maybe I'm still reworking this podcast, but I like my idea. I'm not going to give too much away. It'll be very guest You're heavy. You're not going to give too much away because it's a big reveal or because you don't have an answer yet. Because it, I want it to be a big reveal and I want to reveal it once I have more of it put together. Okay. But it'll be. Well, it'll, then why even talk about it? Because you asked and I want to give you something. Yeah. I like this. I like this, Allie. I am so sorry. It'll be guess every Good. episode. Yep. There's going to be an angle to it. So there's going to be a focus of topic. Always by concept of the podcast or each week it'll be a different topic. Each week it'll be the same topic, new guest. Bless you. I wasn't going to sneeze. I was going to yell, oh. Oh. You're so wet. And bless you. What do they say in church? Do you know when they go, when you say like, yeah, uh, they go, Amen. and peace be with you. There's a, there's a Hebrew song. I don't remember what it is. Uh, la, 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 la. La, 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 la. La 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 and then you go la 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 sorry uh, I don't want to find another mic during a Jewish song. Uh. Do you think it's a problem that the world looks at you and sees a woman instead of a person? Go, 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 go. Do people think a woman isn't a person or they just see me as a woman first and then a person? I think that unfortunately in this in this world that we uh, we collectively have decided on, they see you as a woman first. Did you watch the um, Woodstock 99 documentary watch on it. Netflix? No. You? Yeah. I and saw a clip of... of of that girl singing who she's like you know is it too bad it's better what's her name felissa joan hart and who would have thought alanis morissette yeah she was, was she there i saw a clip of her singing in front of tons of people so i think so no anyway yeah the women were treated terribly there fuck what could what could i a man mm -hmm. do to be a better advocate for you, a woman? Um, I think. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um, I think listening, mm. staying awake. Um, you know, if you see a woman in an uncomfortable situation, just maybe try and suss it out. Right. Mm -hmm. Give me an example. Like if I was at the improv or something. Oh, wait, were you there at the comedy store when this dude was talking to me and then he got kicked out for showing his penis? No, like if the I were there, before? if I were there, he wouldn't have gotten kicked out. You know why? Because he would have been gone. He would have been put in a fucking ambulance because I would have gotten him a job as a whatever those <laughs> EMT? people are. EMT. I hate when I can't think of the thing for the joke. Like it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I wasn't. Um, He was just talking to me and I kept like giving the eyes to my friends nearby me. Fuck. But then it's also that situation where I'm like, why can't I just say, hey, man, I don't want to talk right now. Because you, you, you didn't ask your friends first. Yeah. You could ask your friends in front of him. It sort of serves two things at once. Yeah. Hey, there's a guy right next to me that is I'm not in, I'm not interested in. Um, he's not getting the hint. Should I tell him directly or should I just get the exposition out by talking to you guys on the phone? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think just don't be shitty to women. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not asking how do I treat women with respect, which believe me, it's all I do. I don't know how I have time to do this podcast with all the respect I, I'm doing, giving, not just to women, to people. But women are people. And I think that's important. That's good merch. Women are people. I'm going to start selling people. it. But as an advocate, should I like when I see a woman who is uh, sitting there talking to an, a man who is maybe 
let's say he she is 24 and he's 65 and they're at like catch la mm. right and her and she's wearing a nice dress and he's wearing a, a great suit and it all looks fine it looks like everyone's having a good time but should i be like hey hey to the guy be like i don't know what the fuck's going on here and i'm not to say what you can and cannot do but i will say if you don't treat her with respect take your time and talk to her family before you penetrate her so help me i am not going to get you a job as an emt <laughs> Um, I don't think you need to do that necessarily, but maybe if she has like a friend with her, you could like get the inside scoop, like what's going on with this relationship? Or you could ask him like, oh, how'd you guys meet and see what the circumstance is? Maybe she's being trafficked. Holy shit. That's a real thing, huh? Or if you have a friend who tells you like, hey, I know that this like guy that you maybe know is like being creepy. Like what would you do in that situation? Would you support the woman or would you support your friend who's maybe doing the thing? You know, it's funny that you bring that up be because in a perfect world, I wouldn't eat at catch. I've never been there. Mm -hmm. But if I had to eat there, I would. Could you ask the question again? I, 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 to be honest with you, the weed kind of just kicked in. And I was thinking about the song that Adam Ray sings, The Weed's Kicking In. And I was going to call him to sing it real quick. Okay. Um, but and then you could ask that question again. So there's so there's times when you feel like there's a chance that you might need some help. So you call your friend and he depends on you. And that's when you feel that the weed's kicking in. The weed's kicking in. The weed's kicking in. I'm singing this in an eye doctor's office. The weed's kicking in. There's people looking at me. The weed's I'm, I'm, kicking Adam, in. Adam, I'm picturing you you reading on the, the thing, the letter board, where it just says the weed's kicking in. If this were animated, you know what I mean? Like oh your one eye is covered, and could you read the board, and it says that. What do you think about that as a cartoon? Should we pitch it? I, I think you should animate the shit out of that. You should also animate the guy sitting across from me fucking playing with himself while I'm singing this. Oh, my God. And you oh, know what? I, I, would, go, I would go up yeah, to him and I'd I be said, like... I said that out loud, too. I would okay. say to him, you <laughs> stop that. that. Across, stop playing. I would, I would tell him to stop doing that. I'd be an advocate. Do you know Ali Mikowski nah, well? because I'm... I love Ali. I think she's a rising superstar and, um, and she's a, a, real, a real sweet treat of a person. Well, I got a surprise for you, Adam. The weed's what? kicking in. The weed's kicking in. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, man. Is it time to harmonize over the phone or in an eye doctor's office? Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. The weed's kicking in. The weed's kicking in. The, the weed's, weed's kicking, kicking in. in. Take it, Tony Bennett. Rick, this is where you do it, Tony Bennett. Right. I don't know Tony Bennett. The weed, the weed's kicking in. The Great, that's weed's at Rick Glassman on LinkedIn and at Take Your Shoes Off on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much. And you can check out Adam at the, we'll put up his shows here. Bye, have a good eye, doctor. Bye, Adam. <laughs> oh, too soon. Oh, Bye, Allie, sorry. love you. He's a great podcast. In fact, yeah. he is, I'm almost positive, uh, the most appeared Tyso guest because he just comes in. Mm -hmm. He comes in. There's some people that will always play. And those are people, and I mean this, that are easy to be friends with. Yeah. How much do you connect to that statement? Um yeah, I do um I agree with that statement a lot. But I do um because I get in my head about not being as playful. I get. I have to be in the right, right mood. Like our first episode. Yeah, yeah, and right. possibly this episode. I don't think so. You I don't, don't think know. so? Um, I have. I've gotten to know you a little bit better because of these episodes, and I don't feel like it's as. Uh, Why don't we ever hang out outside of the pod? I'm Why busy. don't we ever get food? I'm busy. I mean, we could. I don't know. Have you ever asked me? No. Right. Yes. You Once you asked about game night. I've asked about game night twice. Well, and once on your Instagram, you said, 
how many people would actually want to like hang out with me? Right. And I said, I would. Well, as far as the game night is concerned, um, I just haven't like I, John and Allison, you know them. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I've gone to their house and had a little, you know, just we played games and it's fun. I'm like, oh, you guys would be a great addition to that. But since then, I've gotten out of my relationship. And also we haven't done it because of covid and just they're working and they're a baby and another one on the way and it's just so uh but yeah i guess i mean I will. how good are you with playing with like new people because me and my friends just played mafia the other night like would if i invited you to that maybe you know i, I i've played mafia a fair amount years ago i used to oh play yeah you it. told me the story and i and i like the game i just i don't know we don't only play Mafia. We have I'll tell you games. what I love and would be down hmm. if it's a game that I really like as opposed to just connecting. I love performance games like charades. Ah. I'm really good at charades. Or should I say... <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. uh. <laughs> you have a low energy that uh, isn't... isn't um, that doesn't... Uh, bring me down oh good, good. <laughs> does that make sense yeah that, down i don't mean depressed not like low energy people are depressing i just meant like generally when you're with somebody who's low energy you kind of adopt that yeah when you, we adopt other people's energies whatever it may be you know um but yeah something about yours which which uh do you know that about yourself know what that i have low energy yeah that it's a very specific kind of like at least the way I see it, a playful low energy. Yeah. And and I really like, depending on who I'm with and where we're at, I try and match other people's energy. Mm. But obviously I don't really change that much. But like, um, yeah, I try I try my best to keep up. If this were your podcast, let's let's you take the reins for a little bit. We're doing your podcast. It doesn't have to be the one that's coming out. It could be anything. Just we're here, you're doing a podcast. How do you do it? What do you do? Hey, Rick, how are you? I'm all right. Thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming on my podcast. Yeah, I loved I loved uh, when you're on mine. So it was an easy decision for me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming over to your house to do my podcast. Yeah. Um, what what um, mm. what's your inspiration when you're trying to do a new bit? Because your your jokes, you know, to talk about stand up, your mm. jokes are. Mm. Actually, no. I have a different question for you. I don't Are you going to edit that out or do we just keep it going? Is no, we'll keep it works? going. Okay. I like to keep it going and let people know what I'm thinking a little bit and my train of thought. I like that. Um, but I'm curious now that you're a serious drama actor. Yes. How does that play into your stand up? Like, do you get in your head? Oh, people from the show are going to come see me. Do I have to cater towards, you know, the TV fans? Right. Or do you try and just keep it true to you no matter what? Um. Uh, the jobs I have have yet to define me. Not to say they ever will, but I haven't ever looked at it that way. So no. No, but I have noticed that after shows, now meet and greets, there are people that came to the show to see me because of As We See It and know of me as this serious uh, award-winning dramatic actor. These are both for my dramatic acting. And... When they talk to me when I'm in this goofy space, it's less about goofy stuff. And they're like talking to me about sometimes they're crying and talking about their family and their connection to the show and how important it is, which is really nice. But when you're doing a meet and greet, you have 15 seconds and then you got to move on because mm -hmm. there's hundreds of you who want to meet me. And I have, they have to be like, you know, they're crying. And, and I go, thank you so much. I know you go, I, I don't know if you know, I don't think you have ever, to do that. Yeah. Hands. When you're a dramatic actor, you have to go, you have to go like this. You have to, yeah, put your hands together and go like, and you also, you can't, you can't just say thank you. You could sometimes, but you really have to, I don't know if you have to do more than not, but often you have to, you have to kind of like what you do during dirty talk. You have to go, oh, you have to say, oh, as if you're caught off guard. Oh, oh you're so oh. hot. Yeah. But this is, thank oh, you so thank much. you. That, and then sometimes if you just, if you just put your hand on your heart to let them know how sincere you are, put your hands together, prayer hands, put your hands on a heart. Because otherwise, they might think you're lying. Yeah. So you put a hand on her, you go. And also, what you could do is if you don't know what to say or you don't want to say too much, you could, there's a way to gesture speechlessness or gesture words aren't uh, strong enough to convey what I have to say. But we're so connected that you're going to know you're going to know what I'm feeling anyway. Because you're doing trades. Because you, 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 you don't just put your hand on your heart, you tap it. 
and nod. You go, and then they go, and then you go. You go. <laughs> yes. Two movies. Um, uh, trying two to th- words. No, no, that's not how you do it. You First, you do the movie. Movie. Right. Go ahead. Then you do two words. Okay. And then you do first word. How many syllables? So to do syllables, you do two words, first word, two syllables. Now you could either come- At that point, if there's lingo to do it, why don't you just say, hey, it's one movie, two words, two syllables. But I get what you're saying. And let me make that argument to any other sport. Let's say basketball, because uh-huh. I know it so well. Because there are rules to the game and then that's it. Well, if there's a three-pointer, why isn't there a four-pointer? Because there isn't. Well, if you're allowed to move while dribbling the ball, why can't you just move without dribbling the ball? Because you can't. There are certain things that you could say that, that that the powers that be have decided this isn't enough of an influence to put anybody at a disadvantage. Well, also, these are the same tools that all have to offer. You can't speak, first of all. That's rule number one. That's like soccer using your hands, okay? You can't speak. This means syllables. Grabbing your earlobe means sounds like, mm-hmm. as in rhymes with. And then there's just movie, TV show, can we play charades? Could I guess? Could do you, you go first? Do you think that a good, and I'm, I'm really asking, do you think a good way to do a podcast that is oftentimes not even watched where there is no speaking? Yeah, it might work. Go ahead. I'm better at at doing. I'm really yeah, good at guessing if the do. other person is. All right, tell me the movie to do first. You'll know it, but just so you could see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, ooh, The Revenant. Tough one. Yeah. Really tough one. Um, also, there's another rule that if you go like this, it means small word, a and the, right? Um, so there's different ways of doing this. Uh, let's see if you get it this way. If, if there was like, oh, we got to get it quick um, and I wasn't taking the safe route, uh, I would do I would do this. Watch this. Okay. This is actually middle ground. There's a safer, this is, there's two versions. I'm going to try this one. I'm going to try this one. I'm going to try this one. Okay. How many of you can get what this is? Movie. Into the microphone, please. Movie. Two words. One. The first word. Small little word. The. Got it. Second word. Wouldn't you go big word? No, I'm telling you three syllables. Okay, three syllables. Okay. Now I'm putting that away. Okay. Toss it aside. Angel. Bird. Rowing, sitting small. Oh, you're just really bad at this. <laughs> boat. Boat. Okay. Oh, because you're pointing at what you're on. Boat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're on a boat. You're. Sh- oh, the Titanic. So there, there is a word for actor, but I don't remember what that is. But like, so if you hear okay, Titanic, so, you would probably guess. Okay, Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse. That's right. The Revenant. The Revenant. <laughs> um, no, those type of movies where like there's not much to perform. Um, like, I don't know how I have you guess a bear attack. I would probably do something with bear and then attack. Um, yeah. Uh, but you uh, sometimes when you have to break down the syllables. So uh, I would do this. If, like if I were really doing it uh, and just trying like as opposed to like taking a long shot with the shorthand where you could be performative. I would go like this. Three syllables. First syllable, rev. Already you get it. Yeah, but no, I didn't rev. tell you. What? I, I did All give right, you. Fine. Um, uh, I just looked at the first DVD I saw, or technically Blu-ray. Movie. Two words. First word. Hair. Harry. I know what it is. Right. Harry Potter. There you go. Uh, I think to be fair, I'll just look at other DVDs. I want to do one now. Okay. 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 Oh, I don't know if that's... <laughs> what, a, what a bad podcast game to play. <laughs> I fucking love Charades, So many though. people watch it, though, don't they? Yeah, look up... Um, look up. Uh, yeah, but also people listen. Um, look up uh, maybe Charades movies so they could be, like, given to us. Okay. Charades. Let me you. Okay. Um, okay. Movie. 
Mm-hmm. Two words. Also, yeah, two words. First word. Wait, hold on. This, this is making noises. I'm not liking it. First word, three syllables. Um. Judge, gavel, court, law, judge. Courtroom. Third syllable. Three syllables. Which word is this? The first or the second word? First word. Yeah, you already told me that then. First oh, word. You're, th- you're picking small words. Oh, this so is So just whole- expand on maybe the words you're already thinking. You mean how many syllables are in that word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a bigger word. Uh, oh. Well, tell me the first syllable. <laughs> Wait, but then that goes against charades. No, you. you oh, first syllable. Like the way I did rev for revenant. Okay. How would I want? How would I do? <laughs> I mean, just fast forward this, guys. But I, I'm I'm wanting to play. So how let's would go. I do the first two syllables? I can't. There's nothing for the first syllable. You go. Okay. First, first, and first two syllables. Well, that's the same as what you're doing before. A judge. If I'm right with judge, then give me clues with judge. Judge, uh, lawyer, Supreme Court, tie. I give up. What is it? Legally blonde. Oof. Oh, maybe I should have started with the hair. Oof. Uh huh. I wanted to challenge. Yeah. You, look, watch how I do legally blonde. I actually, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. I want you to edit this. I want you, whatever. I was going to say put this first and people will guess, but they already know what it is. But here it is. Here's how you do legally blind. You ready? Movie. Two words. <laughs> yeah. For the audio only listeners, it was a I guess I was snap. thinking too too much about um the, the words. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Those are a last resort in my opinion. Okay. Last resort. Okay. Okay. That's one. Well, I don't know. Do we take out the last 40 minutes of this podcast where we're just doing charades and Googling stuff? And the first 40 minutes. <laughs> first 40 was okay. <laughs> um, what else? I'll do games with you. Yeah, I want to play. I'm trying to play more games with friends. I think that would actually be a really fun YouTube show. That would be fun. I think I would actually like to do that. I had this. I, I don't know. I want to tell it. I tell too many of my ideas and then I don't do them and somebody else might. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would love to do do charades with friends. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, that could be great. Anyway, I really, really like that idea. Um, it would be fun to do it too, like at a place that has a proper stage. Mm. What I would love to do at it is like a high school drama club type of stage. You know, those auditoriums that's, it just, it feels like theater class. Yeah. You know, and then you have the, uh, yeah, the people guessing would be seating down below. So like you're really up there performing. You have a whole stage. I want to learn how to do ju- Dungeons and Dragons. I do too. I played once when I was younger, but I don't remember it. But I love Magic the Gathering and I have friends that play D&D. I would like to learn it too. Joe Maganello, who is a guest on here, yeah. is a big D&D player. Mm-hmm. BD and DP. You know, what else? You got, you got to lead me a little bit because otherwise I'm just going to keep talking. I know. I, I have nothing else. I have nothing. And we've done a significant amount of time. Yeah. We could go We could go a little bit more. You know, we could go up. I did Chrissy DeStefano's podcast, Chrissy Chaos. Yeah. And he cut the last 30, 40 minutes to put on Patreon because I guess they only do an hour, mm. which is what the podcast is. So it is what it is. But I didn't know that they were going to do that. And I was like, well, the last like 40 minutes is, is I thought was like so funny yeah. and odd. That's but I will say this. I had a great time on that podcast. Do you know him? Um, I know him. I'm not close right. with him, but we've been friends in social media. I only met him once. We did new faces together a decade ago. Wow. But we didn't really know each other. Wow. What was your new faces? Oh, experience also, by like? the way, congratulations. Thank I could you. answer that, but tell me about yours. You just did new faces a, a, a month or so ago. Yeah. It How'd was it go? so fun. Yeah. Well, like you told so me it, it went well, but that was like right after you did it. What have you heard since? I mean, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Tell me about the experience. It was and so also explain fun. to I people mean, who don't know what, what it is. So Just for Laughs is a comedy festival in Montreal. That Howie Mandel now owns. In Canada, that Howie Mandel now owns. And it's this big biggest, comedy biggest festival. Biggest comedy festival in the world. 
It's very like, there's a lot of like history to it. And it's like very special to be able to be in like the new faces category. It's once a year. There's what, 24 comics? It's once a year. I mean, there's different categories. There's like new faces of a stand up who have We're representation, new oh, faces really? of stand up right. who don't have representation. And then there's characters. And right. the representation else. one is probably the one that is a little bit better. Is that biased for me to say? Maybe. I, I don't just feel think like, you're totally wrong. I feel like if you, I guess, I no, I don't know. Because I didn't have an agent when I went, but maybe they didn't do it then. Yeah, maybe. I don't know how it works. Right. But you go and there's only, you know, there's so many people who audition, who like showcase mm -hmm. to be a part of the festival and only 20 out of maybe 300 at least get 300. picked. 300, it's everyone in the, it's around the whole country. Yeah, it's New York, it's LA, be at least Chicago. Um. And so it's very special if you get picked and then you do this big showcase and there's like a lot of industry people there watching you and Were you nervous? Um, More yeah. than usual. Yeah. But yeah, you did I was well? very nervous. Yeah. The first the first like minute or two I was kind of shaking a little bit. So I had to hold the Visibly? microphone with two hands. I don't know if it was super noticeable, but I definitely had to like keep my hand in check the whole time. Um, but it was fun. The, the set went really well. And then there's just so many other shows to see. Like I went to go see James Acaster, who I'm obsessed mm -hmm. with. If he's in LA, which I think he's going to be in LA, I you need to figure out how to get him on the podcast. People have um, been requesting him. Yeah. You got to do it. Did he's you have so him on yours? Good. No. Oh, you don't know him? No. I was getting nervous. I was being weird at the festival around him. Because you want him to like you. Yeah. I was going to a lot of his shows. Hi, and I was kinda, James. Like, lingering. Did you do that? No, I didn't. I actually, yeah. I saw him the first day that I got there and I was walking to the elevator and he was standing by the elevator and I said, hey, I'm really excited to see your show tonight. And he was like, oh, thanks. And then he we said, oh, like he was having sex with you. <laughs> yeah. Did he go like this? Thanks. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like how I met Lamorne. Yeah. 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 I said, I can't wait to see your show tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I, I did the thing where I said, he was like, it's my first show of, of the weekend. And I was like, my first show of the weekend is right. tonight as well. Letting just to establish I'm also right. a comedian. Also a comedian. Smart. Yeah. And then did he, did you see his eyes dilate a little bit and he saw you a little differently? He eased up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Right. And he go, oh, so he was like, all right, all right. his yeah, posture changed. Cool. Yeah. And so then I went to a show that night and then the next day I think I saw him and I said something so weird. I like he wore a really cool shirt, really cool shirt on his Are show. Are you nervous even now thinking about it? A little it? bit. Right. <laughs> he wore a really cool shirt at his show, and I was like, I have a similar shirt in my Good. closet. Good. No, you're a peer. I'm a comedian. I have a similar shirt. <laughs> so I wore the shirt the next day. And did you show? Did you run into and him? And then I ran into him, and I said, "See, I'm wearing the shirt. That's, like that's great." And what? then it was so weird. It came out so weird. Let's get him on the phone. Okay, call him. I don't know him that well, so let me text him first. Um, he's asking if I could call him on the podcast. All right. Uh, if he gets back to me, we'll call him and ask. But yeah, I went to a bunch of shows. And were you re or represented already? Mm -hmm. So have you gotten like any auditions or offers or m cool meetings? I might be having a cool, potentially cool... Um, audition this coming weekend. What's it for? We could bleep it. it if I'm able to get it, it would be for a showcase. Mm. Do we need to bleep that? Yeah. Do we keep the word showcase? Yeah, you can keep showcase. So then we could also keep it the two times extra we just said it. <laughs> so <laughs> people are going to know it's a certain kind of showcase. They don't know what for. Yeah, yeah. We'll also blur your mouth too so people can't figure it out. Yeah. LeBron does that when he's talking. Other basketball players do, but LeBron's the first I saw it. After a game, like if he's going to another player and he's talking to him, he's whispering in their ear, he also goes like this. So it No one can yeah, no one can assume. Know. Yeah. Um, but off the pod. Yeah, off the pod he doesn't do that. Um off the pod all of the Wait, what are you doing? Well, I'm talking off the pod. Well, don't. I don't 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 give make make our editing complicated. Okay. Tell me after. Because sometimes people will say stuff and I go, don't. She's like, you're like, it's fine. And they're like, you know what? Could you take that out? And it's like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Anyway, I had a great time at JFL. Um, and I hope that I can go back next year. Yeah. 
This is the first. Did you have anything big happen after JFL? Because what I hear is it always kind of takes a while. I um, I auditioned for it after I had booked Undateable, so Um, I was unavailable for doing other stuff. mm. Um, I don't know if uh, if the town how much the town was a buzz or not, but I got I didn't have agents. I got agents. Are Uh, you still with them? I am. Yeah. What's the ugliest face you can do? I do find that a lot of times ah! <laughs> when I smile, I see myself like when I give a genuine smile, especially if the camera's close to me, my nose is so big and Jewish that that's the only time I look at my Like I see myself in pictures where I don't look good, but I do think like, whatever, it's a bad picture. Do you flare your nostrils when you smile? I don't think so. My mom flares her nostrils out really big when she smiles. Why? Because she's so focused on trying to like look skinny and good for the photo that right. she like forgets to just relax her face. Because she's like, it's kind of like how golfers are so focused on what they're supposed to do they don't remember to relax. Mm. Your mom's probably a bad golfer. Yeah, I don't. I've never seen her on a course. Is she a good golfer? Yeah. She- yeah. Go- golfers up, uh, bring their noses up. I can't. Do- Um. <laughs> do you ever go up on stage and feel that way and then go uh, uh, yeah do you think that is uh, because of apathy or lack of preparation I just did a show the other night where I was excited to do the show but then I noticed the audience just like kind of checked out right because of your performance? No, they seemed, I don't know. They were like chatty right before, when the guy before me went on. Who was it? Um, my friend Jake Nordwind. Uh, blur that, or bleep that. That's not nice to say, as if he got them chatty. No, it wasn't him. It was like, as he, before he went on. Well, keep it in. They were being chatty, and they like kept being chatty. Like did they anyone, weren't did like- Did anyone go, hey, 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 is for horses? No, but I think if someone did, it would have really changed the dynamic. Here, how come you don't do that? Because that feels a little bit rude. What about doing it less rude? What if you go, I know that you guys are probably having a really good time. Mm-hmm. It's just distracting me from doing the checks I'm going to do. Well, then they get all uncomfortable and then they're forcefully listening to you. You don't think there's a middle ground? There is. Let me hear your middle ground. You're on stage. Okay. Uh, do you? Did I, hey, guys. Did I um, oh. I, I was just silent, right? I oh silent. you're on your phone what I are was, you I was just making sure it was on silent sorry oh no I hate when my mom she's so bad at the phone she's bad at a lot of things actually um <laughs> the worst thing and then now you're engaged I'm making yeah, the why reason you why that? you're I did so and then they were just still still being annoying and none of the jokes were like connecting with them so I just kind of I right. didn't give up I I, I fought the good fight mm-hmm. I really tried but is giving up ever the right decision Sometimes, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, sometimes I think it is. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Like I probably, I did my full set, but I think I could have, I would have been fine just uh, going off early. Uh, Giving up doesn't have to mean quitting. Giving up could just be abandoning the initial choice. Yeah. And then going in with something like this. Hey guys and girls, those are the main two, but I know there's more. You're not here with me. Uh, do I love it? I don't think so. Do I hate it? This is it my first time I've been here? But here's what I know. I know that I'm not going to be my best self by just doing that stuff that I know is not gonna work. And a little bit of it is selfish and also a good amount of it is wanting you guys to enjoy yourself. So I'm just going to talk about something that is a little new. Something I don't even talk about. Already, we're listening. Mm-hmm. We're listening. Then you could go psych, and then you could go into your act, <laughs> or you could keep going down that way and I just find said, yourself. I just said, you guys are weird. And then I said, I was doing this joke, and they, I was like, I feel like I'm saying a lot of words, mm. and they're not connecting in your brain. That's them, by the way, not <laughs> me. I would never do that to you. But they were going like this. Yeah, you are saying a lot of words. 
how come you can't do that thing that the Jewish guy did where he's like, hey, you know, and be real neurotic and silly about it. I do have a joke about how my voice sounds like I'm doing a guided meditation for heroin addicts. Ooh, let's hear the act out. That's it. You have to, you set, if your setup is good enough for a laugh, you got to paint it for us. All right. Okay. Here's my guided meditation for heroin addicts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sit in a relaxed, bent over, hunched, comfortable position. Great. Allow yourself to nod off, which you most likely are already doing. As you're nodding off, come back to the present moment and remember, oh, fuck, I need more drugs. Mm. And then grab your spoon. That nice, Can I take it from here? spoon. Yep. Then grab your spoon. That nice, cold spoon. Hey, get, get. Sorry, there was a mouse by your foot. Get yourself a bowl of cereal. Because heroin bad for you. Mm. I mean, a lot of people would argue that sugar is bad for you and most cereals aren't great, but we're, we're not. Perfection is the enemy of progress. Hey, get, 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 get. And you take over. As you have your cereal, remember to put the cereal in first and then the milk in the other way around. Right? Because you, because the milk you need first. the ratio. You need the perfect ratio, and if you put the milk in first, now you have to adjust your cereal to your milk choice. But what a lot of people don't realize is you always need more milk than cereal because otherwise it won't be submerged. And that's Some why people, people go for a second bowl. Not because they want it, but because there's leftover milk. Yeah, 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 yeah. But some people don't like it submerged. Some people some like dry cereal. Sure. But, I love it soggy. But then they'll just put a little bit of milk in first. I'm not saying you shouldn't put the cereal in first. I'm saying you should. I'm saying you must. I'll tell you why I put the cereal in second. Excuse me, first. Yeah. No, what do I do? Because I know why I do it, but then am I doing it backwards? I put the cereal in first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's why. Cereal is further to put away. You have to close the, the inside part. You have to close the outside part. You have to bring it to the cabinet. Where milk or a milk substitute it's just you pour, you put a lid on, you put it in the fridge. It's very easy. Once, it doesn't matter what to me, what goes in first, what goes in second. What matters to me is what, how can I get to eating it fastest to give less downtime for it to get soggy mm -hmm. beforehand? And it's easier to put the milk away than it is the cereal. Now you could leave the cereal on the counter, but then again, you could also live in a, in a fucking gutter. Don't leave your stuff out. Put it away now. Otherwise, what, you're going to want to put it away later. I used to do this all the time. I used to be like, hey, go for bed. I don't want to wash my face and brush my teeth. I'll wait. Oh, in three hours, you're going to want to wash your face and brush your teeth when you're even more tired? Rick, get up. That's what I do know. I sometimes I even say it out loud. Rick, Rick, just get up, bud. I know it's tough. If you want to keep watching TV, you could watch it after you brush your teeth mm -hmm. and after you wash your face. And nine times out of 10, if I want to keep watching TV, I'll at least stay, do it in bed. I'm already up. We think being on the couch is what you want. We think being in bed is what you want. We think being out, I don't want to go home yet, is what you want. What you think you want is where you are, not because of where you are is so great, but because where you're going is is unsure, is, is, is not here. And we're afraid of what we're not sure of. And that's the problem. Instead of seeking excitement, instead of appreciating the journey, we instead become the definition of wanting to stay where we are, complicit. And complicit, my friends, isn't a problem it's an epidemic. I say just epi like. Wow. Wow. Go, 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 go. Right, because people want to say that. People don't want to be like, man, I really want to get into heroin. Yeah, you just do it, and it's so good. And then people who don't want to do it, they're like, it's just so much work to get off of it. Yeah. I have a question. How many great things in your life have come from lack of work? Things that came easy. Oh, great! Th oh, wait, what? Hmm. Yeah, it's nuts, man. Rick, I have to go. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for coming over. Thank you so much for teaching me not only that it doesn't matter if you're afraid or if you're confident, as long as you're just, you just show up. And that's what you do. Sometimes you're afraid. Sometimes you're confident. But always, you'll show up. What I want you to do, and I'll leave you with this, is to stop worrying about showing up for other people as much. And just make sure you show up for yourself. Because when you do show up for other people, you want to be your best version. And it can't be if you don't show up for yourself. Make sure you're not doing. Make sure you're not doing. Make sure you're not doing.
stand up for other people, you're not only standing up for yourself, but you're standing up for the idea of being an advocate. I understood so you could just go. When I'm going like this, that means stay. Oh, this means stay. I meant, no. no, I was going up, down. This is stay. Make sure to check out Pod That Snaps to follow and get all of the Polaroids. I haven't put them up yet because I gotta catalog some stuff, but that's Pod Dot Snaps to see all these Polaroids. Brilliant. Another banger. <laughs> 